the last scientific principle of crime investigation. Okay, so, yeah, I got a little too excited there. Um, so this is the last one of this unit. Um, so we will finish up right now with crime scene photography. Yes. So you guys have an assignment. Um, if you haven't already done it, it's going to be um, pretty much really incorporating everything that I talk about, which also is in your lesson. So let's get into, you know, what we're going to, oh, wait, but first, in lieu of my girls loving My Little Ponies, remember I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old and they love My Little Ponies, I found this, I thought it was kind of funny, you know, a little, little humorous. So it's CSP, Crime Scene Ponies. So I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> How am I supposed to collect evidence? without opposable thumbs. Anyways, I thought it was pretty funny. So, um, good old My Little Pony is not a fan, but my girls sure are. So, okay, back to crime scene photography. Um, without crime scene photography, we would not be able to really see some of the details and examine them further. I mean, obviously you can examine the physical piece of evidence, but sometimes that, um, you know, if there's blood splatter or fingerprints or whatever, after handling that, that, that evidence starts to go away. So you can start to see different things in your photography. Most importantly, which we'll learn next, um, next unit, is basically when you photograph, say even something as small and minor as blood splatter, you can tell direction, you can tell velocity, all sorts of things. You would not be able to do that without a captured image. So crime scene photography is very important. All right, so why photographs? Well, obviously, and I thought this was kind of a cool little mafia photo here, um, but document the crime scene and the evidence within it. So that's a really important thing that obviously the first time you see a crime scene, you want, in order to reconstruct it, you want to see that image over and over again. Okay, so you can study that image, you can see the evidence within it, and you can start to reconstruct that crime scene with the aid of those photographs. Okay, so this is not a very clear picture, sorry about that, but as it blows up, it looks really, that, really, really bad. But you can see all of these different evidence here. Okay, after time, obviously, things get kind of moved and tweaked. So the first thing that's done after the crime scene is kind of, you know, um, looked over, the parameter is, is taken, um, but the evidence is marked and photographed, okay? So that's a, kind of an important piece of the why photography, okay? All right, so crime scene versus forensic photography. There are some differences, um, but you have to understand that they also kind of coincide, okay? So um, pretty much all crime scene photographers are forensic photographers, but forensic photographers can go a little bit deeper and they, they won't necessarily take um, photographs of just the crime scene. They may be taking photographs of, um, you know, criminals themselves like mug shots and um, just other details, okay? So all crime scene photographers are forensic photographers. But all forensic photographers don't work at crime scenes. So just as I was explaining, that forensic photographers can be kind of all across the board, okay? Other types of forensic photographers take um, criminal identification photographs, they take photographs of disasters, engineering failures, or product failures, and many other things. So you'd be amazed. So it's not just these crime scene photographers, or crime scene photographs um, that forensic photographers take. A lot of times they are on other, you know, kind of, whoa, the wind's going crazy out there. Um, they're doing other things besides just crime, okay? So here's kind of some photographs of what a crime scene, though, photogra photographer would do. Here are bite marks, okay, on a victim. Um, whether this person is dead or alive, if there's some bite marks, that is clear evidence, okay? And we'll talk about um, how people, how um, crime scene investigators and forensic scientists can actually identify who this is by just some bite marks. So that's one of um, you know the photographs that a crime scene photographer might take. Now this could be a forensic photographer, okay? This could be a crime scene, but this could just be maybe a natural disaster they're photographing, different things in order to analyze the evidence and, and basically figure out what happened, whether it's a crime or it's just a, a happening, okay? So anyways, there's the difference between those photographers. Now, before I get into this next part, um, I do want to tell you guys, this is a great career. It's another part of forensic science. Now, um, you don't necessarily have to be a forensic scientist in order to be a forensic um, photographer. You can be, but you can also just be a photographer. Some people just love taking pictures. 
And if you're really kind of sick and twisted and you want to take pictures of dead people, no, I'm just kidding. It's not just about that. But nonetheless, if you do have a love for photography and you enjoy this kind of um, aspect of science, this might be something that you might want to explore a little further. Okay, moving on to how and what to photograph, okay? So just a couple details, and I so I'm sorry that for some reason um, when I blow this up, it's very light, so hopefully you can see. So one thing that forensic photographers and crime scene photographers really have to take into account are these bullet points. Disturb nothing, including bodies and evidence. So you'll never see um, photographers really moving things and touching things because it needs to be in its exact place. And that's part of their job is to take pictures of its exact location um, after the occurrence, okay? They are also to get a complete series of photos that conveys the story of a crime. So usually it's not just one photograph, okay? It's multiple photographs that they're going to take in order to kind of piece together what happened, reconstruct that crime scene, figure out that story, okay? Pay attention to camera angles so as not to distort the scene or convey a wrong viewpoint. So sometimes, maybe you guys have ever taken a picture and you take it at a particular angle and you're like, whoa, what happened? Like one time um, I took this picture with somebody and my arm was kind of like in the forefront and it looked like it was 10 feet long, okay? Uh, thank goodness it's not really. But distorting viewpoints, you know, you'd want to get an accurate picture of what's going on. You don't want, you know, someone to look like they have, you know, some crazy extra limb that's, 10 feet long, okay? So that's one thing. They have to pay attention to that stuff. And then record all data. Um, if in doubt, photograph it, okay? So uh, the more photographs, the better sometimes. You know, not, not that you want excess, but you want good photographs, but sometimes you need um, more than five, more than 10, who knows? Depends on what the crime scene's like, okay? So those are a couple of things to think about. So this is somebody who um, is obviously photographing something outside and you can see there's even a ruler next to this piece of evidence to show size which is a really important aspect of crime scene photography as well okay um, they are dressed up in the suit as to not taint anything okay and this tends to be um, looks like probably more of a close-up view which I'm going to talk to you guys about in just a second um, here's another picture of a crime scene photographer who's taking pictures of evidence up close okay so that's not really getting the whole crime scene. This is more um, dealing with the evidence. So in that, I want to talk to you guys about the four corners approach and then also the views that are always required. So this is actually from your, um, for, from your unit in your course, okay? If you guys notice, I got that same information from here about what photographers must capture in the crime scene and what they must do. So those are those bullet points. But when we talk about the four corners approach, it says down here, Four Corners Approach provides an overall picture that conveys the story of the crime scene. Getting the angles from all four corners of the crime scene, the room, maybe if it's outside, you're still taking four different angles. Um, so really take that into consideration because everything could look different. You may see something from a different um, corner. So the four corners is really covering your basis. So make sure you guys kind of understand that that is such an important part of the crime scene photography is really getting an angle, a good angle at each um, point in that crime scene location, okay? So that's the four corners approach. Pretty basic, pretty self-explanatory, right? All right, now lighting is a big thing too. You have many different types of lighting. Now obviously when you guys go to take your um, picture, you're not gonna be able to do many of these, but you can also talk about how some of these might help. Direct reflective lighting is actually where um, the photograph uh, is used, or sorry, the photographer uses kind of a flash at about a, a particular angle. So I believe it's 10 degrees um, kind of direct to the evidence or the object um, and as well as the lens. And that really kind of brings out some of the details, okay? So that's called direct reflective lighting. Oblique low angle, low angle lighting um, actually creates shadows, but sometimes you would think, oh, well, why would someone want shadows? But sometimes shadows can actually um, show detail in, in something that you might have missed without that shadow. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I tried to find a, a picture that was um, depicting that, and I could not. So I'm going to keep looking for something like that. Front directional lighting for fingerprints. So they actually have pr um, a specific type of lighting that before they dust for fingerprints, you can actually see because fingerprints are just the oils of all those creases. 
That's why we leave fingerprints everywhere as the oils from our skin. So actually a particular lighting can um, actually show a fingerprint before it's even dusted or um, you know other, other things are taking place with the fingerprints. And then UV lighting is also used to see particular things that may not be seen um, with regular light. Blood and semen, for example, if you were to shine that um, UV light over it, it would actually kind of glow. So it's kind of interesting that depending on the color that maybe these stains are on, you wouldn't be able to tell it's there unless you use a UV light. Okay, so lighting is, is a big deal. All right, so this one, this picture I wanted to show you guys is of an inside crime scene that really, um, there, an inside crime scene is where you really have to look at lighting, okay, because number one, this person is already, you can see some of the shadows casted, so maybe you wanna get something, um, some kind of lighting so that you can see what goes on under here. Some of those shadows are good though, but ultimately inside is where you really are gonna be um, dealing with a lot of lighting issues. Um, so outside crime scenes, depending on you know the time of day, obviously you may not need some of those lighting um, enhancements, should I say. Okay, so the three views that you always want in a crime scene photograph would be the overview, distant view, which many of you guys kind of um, used in your sketches. Okay, if you've already done your sketch, you guys did kind of the overview, the aerial view, where you're looking down on that crime scene. Okay, that's a great way to photograph as well. Whether you're above or you're kind of at a distance, you get that overview of the crime scene. Okay, you need the whole area, if possible. Sometimes the crime scene is too large and you have to end up doing more of a panorama. Okay, but um, that's one view that's absolutely necessary. A medium view where now you're kind of closing in on a particular area and you may take many of these medium views because if you close in on the area, you may, you may not want to do these close-ups quite yet because you wanna see if anything sticks out at this medium view. So maybe you have four or five of these medium views that kind of create that overview distant view, okay? And then obviously you'll see a lot of um, the close-ups for details. So those people, even the pictures that I showed you guys, they're all taking real close-ups, okay? And that's, that's a big deal to catch some of those, um, you know, those details in the evidence that you might see, okay? All right, the last couple things I wanna talk about is digital or film? Does it matter? Are there, is anyone better than the other? Well, you guys know film is almost becoming obsolete. Very few people use film anymore, but at the same time, Sometimes with digital, think about all of the photoshopping and the different things that could happen in um, changing a, a photo. Now, obviously the proper um, precautions are taken when digital, fo digital photos are taken and you know whatever it's stored on some kind of memory card um, cannot leave the particular people that are in charge of that because that's considered then evidence as well, okay? Um, so obviously that doesn't happen as much with film, but film is very lengthy process to process process it um, and it can be more expensive so digital is becoming kind of the obviously the new thing the new way it's not even new it's been around forever um, but there are some slight pros and cons that you'll read about in your lesson so just know that they still are using film but um, for the most part most cameras are all digital now anyways okay last but not least they now have this new technology as in the early 2000s this laser scanning technology which maybe you guys have seen some pictures before something like this um, that they're able to kind of recreate the scene using lasers and it kind of basically shoots a laser. You set up this, um, this technology kind of in the middle of a room or the crime scene and it'll scan this 360 view and it'll go all the way around and it creates kind of this image. So here's kind of this um, you know, regular photograph and it's starting to recreate it in more of a digital format. And so um, they can start to recreate and, and work with that to try and um, see exactly what happened. So it's just another tool to aid um, the crime scene investigators and the forensic scientists in order to kind of help figure out what happened, how and why, where and why, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's the last thing about the crime scene photography. So again, there's how and what to photograph. And then basically that finishes up our scientific principles of crime investigation. I can't believe we are done with unit one already. It's kind of crazy. But there you have it, unit two. It's gonna be just as exciting, if not more. So we'll see you then.